Hello, this is Tony Myers on the Charisma Podcast Network, and this is Pushing Boundaries, Living Supernaturally. Every one of these podcasts are created to guide you to acknowledge your full healing. By his wounds, you were healed. So I want you to live that out. We aren't to live a life plagued by illnesses or injuries, but we are to live our lives with a healthy body. Moses, at 120 years old, had keen eyesight and strong muscles under the Old Covenant. We can attain that as well under the blood covenant of Christ. Today's episode is no different, but before I introduce today's topic, I want you to write down a miracle you've experienced in your own body. Do it right now. Every one of us has experienced a miracle at one time. Remember the miracle. Now, write down a specific area of your body you need a miracle. Then, say to yourself, Jesus healed that. So, I am healed of this. Send me an email at TonyJustBelieves at gmail.com with your miracle request, and I will speak life over that need. How do we reach the full stature of Christ? How do we get to where we are complete and walking in full power of God's life? and power. How do we get there? Is it even possible while we're on this earth? Let's answer that question today because there's one thing that will punch through wrong beliefs, that will punch through uh, having Christ misrepresented, that will punch through unbelief, that will punch through everything that may be keeping you from recognizing your improvement, from recognizing your healing. I want to clarify again and again and again. You already have received. Your healing is within you because you have the Holy Spirit. Too many times we're looking to get healed when our healing is within us. And the ability to recognize it in the flesh, in our bodies, the ability, once again, is within us. So how are we made complete to where we can walk in the fullness of life and power of our Lord Jesus Christ? That is the question today that I will answer. And I love the book of Ephesians specifically. I really love 3, chapter 3, 12 through 20, or actually 21. I really love this line of passage because it is so significant to answer this question. And I could answer it right now, but I'm going to put it off just for a moment and let's see if y'all can catch it. What makes us complete to walk out the fullness of Christ with life, and power. When I think of all this, 
I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with hidden strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow deep down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. <laughs> now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. That's Paul's prayer to us. So what is the answer? That we experience the love of Christ. It is through his love that his power works through us. It is through his love that life comes forth. Knowing having the revelation of Christ's love for us, of God's love for us. That's when, our, when we're rooted and grounded in love. And this is so crucial. How many times myself, with my testimony, what kicked off my healing? Experiencing the love of God which I had never experienced before. And this isn't something that's worked up, made up, faked your way through. It is having a true revelation that God is a loving Father who wants His kids healed. Jesus Himself compares earthly fathers to the Heavenly Father. You being evil, if your son asks for bread or a stone, is understanding this. So many times we talk about God's goodness and then we have to follow it up. Oh, but God chastises you. And so then we think he's chastising us by letting us have a disease, by allowing a disease, by putting a disease on us. That is not a father's love. What earthly parent wants their child sick unless they're insane? In which case, in Jesus' name, I speak a sound mind. There is no loving earthly parent in the world that wants their child sick, and they will go to any means to see their child live a happy, healthy life. God, the loving Father, is times 10,000 of that. It is never His will to see you sick. And when we start really knowing how much he loves us, then we can't fathom the thought that he doesn't want us sealed. That won't even be a thought. And it's his love that will push us through 
even with incorrect beliefs. Hello? My testimony is a testimony of what not to believe. I had all the wrong beliefs. Yet I was healed. Why? Because my expectation and my faith came from within without me even real, real, really knowing it. I felt his love. With that kind of love, how could the Heavenly Father want me sick? <clears throat> and so, getting a true revelation of God's love for us is crucial. Paul did not write this letter and say, you need to know God's harshness you need to go know God's wrath. You need no. know. He wrote this saying, how do you grow? How do you reach the full stature of Christ? By knowing his love. Love does indeed conquer all. And when we have that understanding and that real heartfelt revelation of his love, that's when we start walking in life and in power because now we're working from his love. But we cut that off at the knees when we bring in God's harshness and all this other stuff. Does God chastise us as a baby, as correcting a child? You are not going to chastise a baby or a child by giving them a disease. Does God correct us as a loving father? As a loving father. Does he forget our mistakes, our errors, when we are not walking in faith? Remember, anything that is not of faith is sin. But yet he is so merciful that he forgets it. We can't over embellish his love for us. We can over embellish his strictness. We can over embellish his wrath. We can over embellish on those things. Because then we're working with a human perception. Not with the way God is. And there's only one person that fully, fully, fully displays God's love for us. That is Jesus Christ. The harshness we don't see in Jesus. People... We'll point right to the Old Testament. See, 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 see. But what does Jesus show us? And then, in order to reach for that harshness, then we're going to reach for the temple. When Jesus uh, cleared the temple out of the livestock. See? Jesus wasn't all nice and pretty then. And we're grasping for straws. He was chasing the livestock out. He wasn't whipping people. Come to know his true love. Not our human perception of love. He is a loving father. He did not sit by. Idly. And let things just happen. <clears throat> Even during the Old Testament. He declared himself to be the healer of his people. 
I am the God who heals you. And then Christ comes along. Now, it is open to all of us at all times. So really getting a deep understanding of how much God loves us, that is when we start walking in his fullness with life and power. Because now then we know that that person who is quote unquote out in the world is loved. And then we can walk up to that person, bless them, and see them healed. Now they've had a demonstration of his love for them. The most effective form of evangelizing is seeing the sick healed. And one thing that often confuses people Jesus sent us out to pray to see people healed. These things will follow those who believe. He commanded us to go to those who don't know him and see them healed. The believer who already believes should be healed. Jesus' command to pray for the sick to see the sick healed wasn't towards other Christians because we already have our healing within us. We just don't know it and we're just reaching as a body a level of maturing where we are starting to understand this. We already carry our healing within us. And we should know that. We haven't known that. But now, more and more people are coming to this understanding. Where the Holy Spirit is, there is life. And he that dwelleth within us is giving life to our bodies. Constantly. And when we believe and trust in that through knowing his love for us, then that's what will happen. And so when we go out and about, we are to share his love with others, one, by ministering to the person in front of us, to administer healing. Spiritual gifts are not a gift for me. It's what we already have as believers deposited within us and we're to gift it to someone who doesn't know Jesus. That is what a gift is. It's a sign for the <coughs> unbeliever, but for believers, it should be a normal part of life because we have his power within us. Nothing touched Jesus until he gave himself up. This is huge. The Holy Spirit inside of us is our protector. And he is sustaining us. But we need to know the love of God 
to reach the fullness and the completeness and look on it as what it truly is, unwavering, always there. He always loved his children, and he wants everyone to have that same benefit. All of these things shall be added unto you. When what? You understand where his righteousness, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. These things are his protection, his healing, his divine health. That are these things as we come to know his love for us. That is without any equal. So how do you, do you walk? How are you made complete? Through the revelation of his love. Think about this. Earthly parents. An example would be a mother. You let anything attack their child and they see it. They will rip you apart and not care to the point of having supernatural strength. Our loving Father is no different. But because He is Spirit, we have to believe. In so many cases, people that have grown up in a strict religious environment such as Catholicism such as myself many of us when we're healed we experience the love of God for the first time we have many healing testimonies start with a person like myself whose parents tried to raise him Roman Catholic I turned atheist then 43 years later I feel the love of God seek and ye shall find knock the door will be opened ask for a revelation of his love Make a decision about his love for us. And then the healing will happen because it will bust through everything else, just like it did in my case. When I was healed, I had no knowledge of any of this. It was his love, me seeing the vision, and no, I'm going to tell you right now. Now, hey, I am a firm believer. If you ask for a vision, and you are believing that God has said yes, and you are expecting it to happen, will he? Yes. I am a firm believer of that, but do not pigeonhole God his spirit is in us he knows what we need better than we do so don't let oh I want to experience it the way Tony is don't be boxed in by that be totally completely open try to recognize where God is working throughout your day. I guarantee there's always something that the Holy Spirit is working in us or through us or around us to where there are miracles plenty every single day. 
Are we looking to recognize those miracles? Or are we just pushing them off to happenstance, circumstance? Do we rationalize them away? Or do we accept that this is the Lord? That's a miracle. Desire to have a deep revelation of his love. And he will give it to us. He is more than happy to. It is God's goodness that lead men to repentance. It's noticing and recognizing how good God is. And recognizing the circumstances. And realizing, trust in Him, not in our self-effort. Trust in His love. The cross is forever fixed as a representation of the Father's love for us and Jesus' love for us. It's unmovable. It's always there. He did that because that is how extreme his love is for us. That knows no bounds. And that's trying to put us on the right path to his abundance life. <laughs> he wants that for us. That's what he's guiding us to. He's not trying to guide us off of the path of hell. What he's trying to do is guide us to the path of life. Because that's what his desire is for us. That we may each have life and have it more abundantly. The issue isn't about avoiding hell. The issue is about a loving father who wants to see the best for his children, for his creation, that which he made, and that which he wants to succeed, succeed and flow in his love. He is not withholding any good thing from you. And when we have that revelation, just like I did July 4th, 2012, then that's when we start walking more in his life and power. When we come to the end of ourselves and the beginning of his love for us. I speak the Holy Spirit is flowing through your body right now. He is the river of living water cleansing you completely, including your health, including your organs, including your muscles, your tendons. Right now, life. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. Thank you for watching my ta channel. Now, hit the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Click that bell. There you go. Click it. All right. Good. Write a comment. If you would like prayer, write a comment for prayer. Give me some feedback. What about this teaching helped you? What didn't help you? Now, if you would like to partner with Outside the Four Walls Ministry, my ministry, then simply go to TonyBelieves.com. And we appreciate you wanting to partner with us to reach the lost and see everyone healed. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Be healed and be a blessing.